Remember that super secret project I was hiding from you guys in my overhead bunk when I did the mini tour of my new RV? Well, this is it, you guys. It's my new garden, and I have a full garden up there. It goes down the road with me, and it actually produces food that I eat in my RV. And today, I'm going to tell you guys all the hits and misses that got me to the point to back here. everybody. You know, when anybody asks me what I miss most about living in a sticks and bricks house, I normally say a garden and a bathtub. I do miss taking a long hot bath, but I like to grow herbs and my own food, and I find that it's just really peaceful and calming, and I thought that that was not possible in an RV. Now, I've seen some other people on YouTube that have a plant in their shower, or they keep a plant on their dashboard, or they take a couple outside, but I wanted to do more than that, and one of the reasons that I chose a Class C over my B+, was that it had this great overhead bunk with a big window, and so when I'm driving down the road, all these plants get a bunch of light. But I did figure out some ways to make plants work in here. At first, some stuff did not work, so I'm going to tell you guys what worked and what didn't work. But right now, as you see behind me, I've got, gosh, I don't know, 20 plants about that. I've got flowers back there and herbs and microgreens and a tomato plant and strawberries and a pepper plant, which hasn't produced yet. But let me walk you through what I actually did up here. So if you guys want to grow one plant or a whole bunch of plants like me in your RV, you can do it. The first consideration I had when I thought about doing a garden was my cat. And my cat's 12 and he's got arthritis and he doesn't jump up on furniture or up on surfaces like he used to. But of course, I wanted to make sure I didn't have any plants up in here that were poisonous to him, so I looked them all up. And I also wanted to make sure that he couldn't get up there. First, I was looking at an enclosed greenhouse that I was going to put up there that would only hold about five plants. And I got it, and it was gonna work great up here. And by the way, you guys, I'm going to put a link for my Amazon store down below. And at the very top after this video, you're going to see RV plant growing equipment. And you'll see the greenhouse that I got in there. It was really very cool, but honestly, it wasn't big enough for me because I decided I wanted to go bigger. And what I found is that I can actually block the cat from getting up because he only has one way to get up, and that's jumping up from the couch, which is already kind of high for him. So I just put some books up and some other things to block him from getting in there. And, uh, you know, you guys have to just know your own cats. And I know that I could have put a net up here, or I could have, you know, put some stuff in, like, some upside-down terrarium jars, which I've seen some people do. Uh, but for me, this actually has worked out really well. The next consideration, of course, is that you don't want stuff falling over up there and the soil going everywhere and things falling out of the overhead bunk while you're going down the road. My overhead bunk has about a two inch lip, you can see here, just like other RVs normally do. And so what I've done is I've kind of braced everything in here up against that lip. And I'll tell you, going down the road, things don't even move. You know, I didn't want to spend too much money on this in the beginning because I wanted to make sure it was going to work. So the first thing I tried, which is easy to try if you want to try it, is I took kitchen scraps and I put them in some water until they were starting to grow and then I transferred them to soil. So you can see here I did some green onions and I did romaine and cabbage and bok choy and it all grew and was great and worked better than I thought it would. Here's what I figured out from that for RVs, if you have a limited space, like me. They grew, but then when I harvested them, 
I got a small amount of food from it and then it took another two weeks before I got any more. So I just ate what I had and I moved on except for the green onions which you can see here grow like gangbusters. These actually are from the grocery store and so I went ahead and ate the green onions. You just cut off the tops and then you put the bottom with the roots showing in a little bit of water for a couple days until you see some sprouts growing out the top and then you transfer it to soil and I use these almost every day. I just cut a shoot off and I put it on my food. Other than that, I really wanted something that produced food for me to eat that was easy to grow and grew really fast. So I am growing microgreens, two different kinds right now up here. I'll show you guys that I just harvested some pea shoots that I waited like 15 days to harvest because they were like 18 inches high. And you know, if you've never had pea shoots, they're, they taste like peas. They taste to me like a cross between peas and like romaine. And then next to that, I have some zesty greens, which is like some, you know, broccoli sprouts and radish sprouts. And all this stuff is great sprinkled over soup or salad or your eggs or potato or whatever. So you just sprinkle them into the soil they are incredibly easy to grow. They don't need a lot of light. They don't take a lot of water. And within 10 days, you have a harvest and then you can start over like I have here. So up here in the front, I'm actually growing watercress. I just put the seeds for the watercress in here yesterday. And so now all I have to do is spray it with a mist a couple times a day. In about three days, I'm going to see sprouts coming up, but I'm pretty excited about that. Besides that, I really wanted to grow what I enjoyed really eating. So I started out with mint. It did so great that I have another kind of mint and I have lavender and basil and sage and cilantro and gosh, oregano. I have a ton of different herbs up there. And I tell you guys, when you walk in here, it has completely changed the feel of my RV. It's like walking into a bouquet or a garden. It just smells so fresh in here. And my vegetables were doing so great with the grow light behind me, which is one of the secrets to making this work, that I actually added flowers. I love flowers, but I could never keep them even in my house because the boy would just eat the leaves. And since he's not getting up here, I can have flowers up here that bloom and I can switch them out if they're just perennials. And I love them at night when it's just this light going up here. Right now I've got the lights on so you can see it better, but at night I'm laying back in bed and it's just like this blue pink light is illuminating the plants and you can see all the flowers stretching up towards the light and I really really love it. I do also have back there a tomato plant which has grown like a foot since I got it. It was just a little baby. So you can see here I have it staked and I've bent it so that it can actually grow without hitting the ceiling. The height in my overhead bunk is about four feet high so they can't go higher than that. I don't need it to because I can bend the tomato plant, but it has grown like crazy and it's got buds growing. I also, for fun, had a little mini pepper plant. It just got its first bud for a pepper. And besides that, I got a couple of little strawberry plants and they have also bloomed. So I'm really excited to see how those do in here. When I started my garden, I had some successes and some failures. So let me tell you what's worked for me so far. I've had the garden three months the first thing I did was I cleared out the overhead bunk and I laid down a thick layer of cardboard just in case any water gets loose. I just used some discarded cardboard that I found near a store. And then, so nothing slides around up there, I got some cheap yoga mats from Walmart. There are two black yoga mats up there. I used yoga mats instead of the non-stick cabinet stuff because I just wanted one big piece and I didn't want to have to worry about like cutting it and having the edges curl up and stuff like that. I think I spent 15 bucks on the two big XL yoga mats that are up here. That was a total win. Then I got these big plastic containers. Now, I started smaller. So I actually got plastic containers that I have since given away and moved to the ones up here. And I don't put them too far in the back because I couldn't reach back there. Even though it's closer to the window, which does give them sun during the day, I wanted to be able to just get up on a little step stool and get up there to water the plants. And so I ended up switching out to some other bins, which you see here, and they worked great. One of the failures I did have in the beginning was I tried to take some of those plastic planters and just jam them next to each other, thinking that when I went down the road, I wouldn't have a problem with them falling around up there. I was totally wrong because they're round and they're smaller at the bottom. So of course, when I was going up and down dirt roads and taking turns, they moved and the soil would crack and I could see the roots and the plants didn't do as well as they could have, even though I tried to fix them once I stopped. 
So to fix that, I found some amazing fabric planters, which I'm going to go through all the gear here with you in a second. But here's why these are great. I could put more soil in the bottom and like broaden them out with my hands and the soil. So the center of gravity on these was really low. And then you can kind of shape them when they're pushed up against each other. So there are plants up in there that are kind of rectangular and not square. Like if I had a little extra space and I just wanted to grow some celery. Oh, that reminds me, I do have celery back here that I grew from the store also because it's done so great. This is the same celery that I started three months ago. You know, it doesn't make a big stock of celery, but it makes a great green to clip off and just chop up and put over your food. Or like if you're going to make a tuna salad or something. Personally, I make like a chickpea salad because I don't eat tuna. But, you know, if you want to chop up celery and put it in anything, it's great, including soup. Another thing I did is I didn't want to see the plastic bins. I thought they were kind of ugly. And, you know, the black bags aren't bad, but I really didn't want to see that much of them. So I just went to Home Depot and I got this piece of wood. And, you know, it was literally just a piece of wood in the lumber department. They didn't have to cut it or anything. I think eventually I'm going to paint it. But now, when I have my microgreens growing here, it gives you this amazing row of grass, and then this piece of wood, and then nothing but greenery behind it, which I thought worked out pretty well. Let me show you my little pack of gear here that makes my garden and my RV a success. This is a new pack of those planter bags. This is how they come. There's 10 of them here. I got the gallon ones and the two gallon, and I found that I really didn't need the two gallons. The gallon ones are perfect for like herbs and smaller plants, and so I got another pack. But these actually expand into a square or you can kind of fill them in odd shapes so they can go around the other plants when you have room to put just another plant in the corner. They have little handles on the side so you can just lift the plant right out and take it to your sink if you want to work on it or prune it or something like that. The very cool thing though is that inside of those plastic containers you can just water them and they drain out naturally outside of the fabric. They're BPA free but the best part is that if I want to, I can just pour water into the base of the plastic bin because this material will soak up the water and only as much as the plant needs. But I will tell you that you need to choose plants that have a shallow root system or you have to fold the bags down. It's not like you can have, you know, a plant with this many roots and put the water down here because then the water doesn't get up there and it just makes it a soggy mess. I learned that in the beginning. So for the ones with shallower roots, I just fold the bag over so I have like that much soil and then I can water the entire tray at one time without having to get up there and do a bunch of bending around or taking the plants down to water them. Then to water individual plants if they need it, I found this very cool watering thing. First of all, it doesn't have a big spout on the end, it just has this little hole. So I'm not spraying water all over up there. I can make sure that the water just goes inside the bin. I've had absolutely no problems with water getting out and onto my overhead bunk. And this little tube here, you can shape into any configuration. It can reach anything. So you can water from the top of the plant or the bottom of the plant. And it was super cheap. Of course, my micro green holders, I love. They came with a spray bottle. And like I said, they came with a growing medium and some seeds to get you started. This is the massive USB grow light. You can see that it has three lights on it. And right now it's off because I wanted you guys to see what it looks like off. It actually has this little clip so you can clip it onto anything. Before I had the wooden surface, I just had it clipped onto the side of my bin. It worked great. And what I love about this thing is that these bend in any direction and see this black top it stops the light from going up so you can make the actual light itself hit anything you just move this wand around so if I think one of my flowers for example needs more light I can put it on the flower I can move it up here and put it on the microgreens or whatever normally I have it up like this as you can see and you guys when I'm going down the road it stays just like that which I have found to be amazing there's a cord that goes from the light itself and I just tuck it behind this wooden thing and then you have these controllers right here now here's where you change it so the lights go from pink to blue and there's a timer on here 
I like to have the blue and the pink light together because I think it's beautiful and the plants love it. I personally have a TV next to my overhead bunk that has an inverted plug, so I can put the USB plug for the light up here if I turn my inverter on. But I don't like to use my power that much because you guys know I'm a boondocker. So I do do two other things to make sure that the plants have light. What I do is I keep a little external battery pack like this one that has a bunch of USB ports. I don't know if you guys saw my video, the ABCs of power always be charging, but I always have this thing charging. When I'm going down the road, I charge it on my 12 volt, you know, cigarette plug up in the cab. And then anytime I have sunshine, it's either charging on solar or if I have the inverter on, it's charging. I have used some of the cheapy ones, you know, that are 10, 20 bucks you can get at Walgreens and they just only kept the light going for an hour or two and I want to put it up there and forget about it so I think this one was maybe 40 bucks and it keeps the plants going for hours and I can tuck it right up in here the coolest way though I have found to keep the USB lights going for the plants is I have a 60 watt solar panel here that I've had for a long time it's cool because it's like an accordion it just unfolds and I lay it out in my dashboard in the sun and by the way you guys I keep it in my dashboard while I'm driving to charge devices but this thing does take USB devices but the plant light was not long enough to get there so I actually got for five dollars a little extension cord here so I plug this into the solar panel which I keep in my dashboard and then the USB plug for the lights goes right in here and I put it along my passenger side door so what happens is when the sun is out the solar starts automatically charging through this cord and goes up and the light turns on and the plants grow and when the sun goes down the plant light turns off and it's I think just like nature for them at least as close as I could get it and I'm not having to go back and forth and you know turn on the lights and turn off the lights and turn on the inverter turn off the inverter finally I'll tell you guys that I did have some pests in the beginning now I don't know if you guys follow me on Instagram but one day I posted this picture where I said what the heck is this thing it was in the RV with me during the blizzard and I was like hey little buddy you're weird you look like you know Dracula had a moth and I didn't want to kick it out because it was so cold outside what I didn't know and thank you Instagram followers for telling me is that this is a moth that lays its little caterpillar eggs in plants and then the little caterpillars eat out the inside of the stalks of the plants and I actually lost a couple of plants that way so what I did is I just threw out those plants and I started over meanwhile I saw that I was getting like a fruit fly here and there so I got some of this house plant sticky stuff and it just goes on these little posts inside of the plant with these little yellow ribbons which I have hidden up there and you can't see them but they trap the bugs. The bugs crawl on them and they get stuck and then you just throw them out. And so that has worked really great for me. Other than that, I haven't had any pest problems at all. As for soil, what I've done is I actually use half organic vegetable potting mix and half coconut core. Now, I had some leftover coconut core bricks from when I had my composting toilet. And the deal with coconut core is that it's like compressed into this brick. And when you add water, it expands into a sponge that's really big and it just crumbles like soil. And it's really good for an RV because it takes up just a little bit of room when it's in its dried state. And for the plants, it's really great because it holds moisture and it's lighter than soil. So I do about 50% soil 50% coconut core for the plants and for the microgreens. I know some people grow their microgreens just in coconut core, but I just mixed it all together. It's worked fine. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. If you have, please do give it a thumbs up. Share it with your friends. If they're on the road or they're going on the road and they want to have a garden, it has worked really well for me. If you guys want to see more videos on the garden, please let me know and I'll film some other stuff and tell you how it's going and more things that I've learned along the way. I appreciate you all very much. Everybody have happy travels out there and be free.